Welcome to episode 62 of Slightly Unmeditated, a casual talk podcast about the WTFs of spirituality, self-improvement, and motivation with a lifelong delusional optimist who used to suck at meditation. I'm Tisha, and tonight I'm winging it solo. Uh, Like last week's episode, we talked about how our letdowns can be our lessons. And so uh, my guest that I had scheduled for today actually was not able to be here. So I had to make a choice. Do I just cancel it and tell everybody, okay, see you next week? Or do I just move forward and try the solo experiment? So guess how that decision turned out. (laughs) Um, I started looking up a couple of ideas that I could talk about solo Um, and nothing was coming. So I did what I'm always told to do and I shut up. I shut my mind up. I shut my mouth up and, um, this brilliant idea came to me about, um, reflecting on the last 61 episodes I've done unbelievably over the last year. Um, the episodes that I did with Kim, the ones we now do with Juanita for Off the Shelf. And, uh, it was, I have to say it was a pretty cool experience just sitting here for an hour, kind of mulling over these thoughts. So I guess now I can share them with you as well. So welcome to the recap episode. All right. So I posted something on Facebook earlier that was talking about spiritual awakenings being come, becoming more common. Um, God, I'm seeing so many things. Um, again, affirming where I'm going, where I've been, what's next, that there's no denying it. I mean, it's way beyond coincidence. It's just, it, sometimes it's chill-inducing how on point the messages that I get really are. Um, So of course, this made me reflect on my own journey. And then it made me realize how much I've chronicled just in this podcast and kind of where my mind was at from the very first episode to where it is now. And it's so insane. Um, I'm always like flabbergasted by how it all makes so much sense. And then it totally doesn't. And then it totally does again. Um. I mean, God, since 2021, the start of, uh, my practice has grown in ways that I just have never imagined. Um, I'm realizing kind of more and more that it's the things that I'm letting come to me and come through me um, is how I need to do it. Um, I accept that more every day. I, I mean... I think sometimes the universe has forced me to sit in meditation to kind of get it finally. Um, A lot of things that I thought were roadblocks at some point, um, I quickly realized that they were merely just bumps on a sidewalk and all I had to do was step over them. Again, mind blowing. Um, Even today, like not having a guest to speak to, at first I panicked and then I was like, well, I'll just wait till next week. And then that little voice in my head said, no, this is not what you're doing. Consistency is key. And now is the day that you practice uh, a, a solo podcast. So here we are. Um, I already mentioned the consistencies, but I mean, sometimes they're the only things that keep me going. Uh, I meant the consistency of synchronicities. The synchronicities are insane. My phone lights up, it's 444. I get an email, it's 1212. I mean, it's just at least 20 times a day. I see some synchronicity that reassures me, yep, yep, we're paying attention. Um, You got it. Keep walking forward. So I really appreciate that. 
at times, the other day I participated in an online gathering of sorts with the girls from Indigenous Wisdom. Hey, Nadine. Hey, Vicki. And uh, Nadine mentioned that they were, well, she was feeling a lot like um, she was time traveling. Like she would wake up and then next thing you know, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. And I've really been feeling that happening to me a lot. I feel like I've been stepping out of like these different worlds um, back and forth. It's a little disarming. Um, and honestly, I'm probably like the last person to ever say <laughs> this stuff out loud. Um, but I can't deny it. I have to like just stay true to what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing. And that's kind of really the biggest lesson I've learned in the in the last um, 15 months that I've been doing slightly unmeditated. So that's super cool. Um, today I was listening to some podcasts about si the simulation theory and secret societies. And it really did make me realize, um, how much I love this life that I'm creating, even when the days are like the worst. I, it, it's just amazing that following my beliefs and intuition keeps leading me into these places where I'm seeing like, God, life is so beautiful. And again, for the record, I'm like the last person to say, oh, how beautiful life is, you know, <laughs> um, but I'm really getting it. I really am. Um, gosh, way back in January of 2021, um, the, the episode started out basically talking um, generally about things I kind of knew about and things that I was learning, the general principles of uh, being an empath, law of attraction, um, you know. And then by episode 12, I was like telling people publicly my menopause journey in the listen to your body talk episode. Um, I mean, it's just really unbelievable how far I've come in what I'm willing to say. It was around that time, too, I had heard somebody else on a podcast just being so freaking authentic that it was contagious. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to move forward, this is the only way I can do it. And then since then, I get a lot of really cool feedback about that. Um, that part that I never thought I could do is just be like super authentic and open, especially as I've mentioned a million times on a show that's recorded for the world to hear. Um, I was thinking about the episode we did in 17. It was episode 17 called, oh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was about languishing. And uh, that was a, like a super important episode for me. It was smack dab in the middle of the pandemic and everybody's feeling so horrible, but not sure what's going on. And that's where I discovered Adam Grant, the uh, organizational psychologist. And I just thought he was great. Started following him. I get a lot of wisdom from him. Um, I also found at that time that my love of listening to other people's podcasts really grew stronger and it was sustaining me to go on these long walks and because I had to hear what happened from start to finish. So that was really cool. And then suddenly walking was like a daily part of my life, which before that took like gallons of mental effort to just get up and put some shoes on and leave the house <laughs> Um, some following episodes, we talked about ebb and flow and, you know, I remember thinking back then, like, oh, it's a crisis because I'm, I'm ebbing, you know, and I couldn't get my act together. And I still struggle with that in that I can't realize that like, maybe it's just one bad day and not like a whole bad life when things don't go the way I hope they would. Um, I think it was also around the time where I learned a little bit about the difference between hope versus expectations. Um, I, that's still one of my 
one of the things I think about a lot when people just mention either one of those words, I immediately think about that episode. Um, the ebb and flow episode, I think was episode 27. And then right after that, between episodes 28 and 29, um, I discovered, well, probably before that, but I had discovered the brilliance of Jeff Warren and I did his 30 day meditation on the call map. And I think that was a huge turning point. I think even back then I knew it was going to be a huge turning point. Um, But not only did I get meditation and what, what it was about, um, I, this episode hasn't aired yet, but Juanita just said, and I think, and it was in, um, off the shelf that's coming up soon. She mentioned that, um, she was thought to, to do meditation properly. You had to go into this like trance like state and then miracles would happen. And I was of the same belief until I heard Jeff and the calm app. And then that's where a lot of things started falling into place. Um, Soon after completing that, I actually started looking into retreats and found, ironically, one of his that was close to me. And I went there and met, oh my gosh, so many really great people. But it was also that eye-opening experience where I'm not alone in this. Like, there's other people that think like this, too, that are seeing these synchronicities and these um, just like yearning for spiritual growth that I don't even know if I knew what that term meant until I went to that retreat. So that was like an amazing experience. Um, I I can still feel what those days felt like um, recording the episodes like before and after that period and how things kind of changed for me personally. Uh, speaking of personally, um, the next thing I wrote down here was episode 32 was called it ain't personal. And, uh, I thought it's kind of funny now in retrospect, how much we hit naturally on topics that are still coming up for us now, but like in a deeper way. So I think we did two episodes on it ain't personal kind of topics And I was thinking that perhaps it was foreshadowing of, you know, episodes like we did um, for Off the Shelf of the Four Agreements, that being one of the the agreements about not taking things personally. And um, it also is kind of a reminder that I'm not just kind of learning about the stuff, but I'm really integrating it into my life. And that that point in particular about not taking things personally has really helped a lot. Like it reduces a lot of stress, just thinking, or at least not overthinking, you know, when I'm in a situation that everybody's out to get me or nobody likes me or they all think I'm a weirdo or whatever it is, you know, and um, taking that to heart and really just, um, knowing that all these people who are seeing these similar things from book after book after book and from centuries ago till now, I mean, they're not just making this stuff up or like, as your parents used to say, I'm not just talking to hear myself talk, you know, it's just, it's so magical. You know, I love that word. I love that Kim, Kim and I talk about magic all the time. I still have my secret wand well, not so secret because I show it off anytime anybody says wand or magic. <laughs> um, and then, well, perfect lineup. Episode 39 is when we um, meet life coach Kim. And that was recorded sometime in September or at least dropped in September. I had only met Kim in August at the retreat. Um, you know, that that episode we talked about life coaching as her introductory episode. And I remember thinking kind of how ironic it was because not very long ahead or along before that, I had been actually thinking about, you know, how do I 
besides the podcast, how do I make a career out of this kind of stuff? Like talking about the universe and motivating people and all these things that just feel right. And so life coaching was one of the things I had been looking up. And there was like certificates out the wazoo, you know, some were like a dollar. So I wasn't really convinced of their quality at the time. And then I also kind of put it on the back burner because I'm thinking like it's a whole shift and I'm already making money doing something that I'm good at. So it just became a non-issue. And then, of course, as the universe would have it, I actually meet a life coach. (laughs) And not only a life coach, but one with like ambitions and this energy that matched mine. And it was like, oh, it's still a great experience to to be around people, not only like-minded people, but like energy matching people, people who are, you know, up there, ready to go. Um, that is few and far between. And trust me, I've lived my whole life <laughs> looking for it. Um, so thanks the universe for that. I mean, not only did I get like, um, you know, a, a true, a tried and true friend, but also like a, a life coach that I clearly needed <laughs> as every episode now highlights. Um, and n- not only that, but she is a life coach who also, you know, believes has the same kind of spiritual beliefs as I do, which is just stimulating. I mean, it just calls for stimulating conversation and th- just so many benefits to that. Um, let's see, we are on the timeline already, uh, October. October was a transitional time. Um, Lori ended up leaving the podcast. And again, another panic moment. What do I do? Oh my gosh, this is not my plan. I did not account for this. I can't interview people. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to quit the podcast. It's all over. And then, I mean, it was pretty fast in my mind. I think it was divine intervention where I just had the freak out for a little while. And then I had a regroup. And in the weekend, over the weekend, I just had to, I don't know, my mind just opened and it was amazing that I could sit down and kind of restructure, you know, how I saw my vision. My vision kind of morphed it before my eyes even. Um, so I kind of go into episodes, you know, after October, um, in a f- in fear on one hand, because I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to interview people? How am I going to find people? I, I Now I'm dependent upon people. What am I supposed to do? And you can, there's proof. The, the universe listens. There's proof. You go back now and imagine that we've met since then. Jen, Juanita, Justin, and his Jinshin Jayetsu. We met Nancy, lovely Nancy, and her Reiki. Uh, We got to meet Debbie, Bubbles and Books Debbie. We did a mentoring episode. Claire, part of my um, meditation retreat group, who is just so fun and so knowledgeable about all kinds of things. She introduced me to Alex, the yoga superstar, who I adore. We had like the best conversation. Then people in my own backyard who I've known for, I've known about, but had no reason to approach them before this, Nadine and Vicky from Indigenous Wisdom. They just became lights in my life. They're like right there (laughs) in my own backyard. Never imagined that uh, happening. So that was an amazing experience. Um, and then I came to another bump in the sidewalk. I started running out of people I kind of knew. (laughs) 
And I had to push the envelope again. I had to start reaching out to people who um, either did their own podcast or was some kind of on their, some way on their spiritual path that I had to kind of go through a whole list of people and figure out like, who could I speak with? And, you know, what, what could they teach us? We met Amanda talking about polarity um, from Mexico, right? Whoever imagined that I would even be going that far to talk to people. Then I meet Regis, who was just a spitfire ball of energy that I appreciated so much. Um, and we're still working on things for the future together. So again, divine intervention. Um, and we also got to see Kim's spiritual side, you know, a little crossover action, which makes her life coaching skills even more amazing. So, and actually expanding further on that, um, now people are emailing me, the podcast, to be guests on the show. And literally the universe is like delivering, hand delivering them. So flashback just a few months ago, I was already in a panic. What am I going to do? How am I going to meet people? How is this going to work out? Is it worth doing? Why do I, why do I have this calling? What am I supposed to do now? And I, I did go kicking and screaming a little bit, but for a lot of time I did shut up and listen and trust the process, right? Trust the process. My three favoriteest words and yet my three least favorite words. It depends on the day. Um, okay, so we covered all the guests, the guests I never imagined I would have, and I can only imagine what's coming up next. Further expansion. Just in a random conversation, we came up with the idea for off the shelf. And that's kind of, for lack of a better word, forced me into um, reading books that maybe I would have never read before. You know, I'm a, we're only three books deep and I'm already, my mind is blown. How could I have ever lived without these books in my life and the information I'm getting from them? And had we not decided to put that show together, I wouldn't have read any of these books, probably. I wouldn't even have known they existed, you know? Fascinating. Um, one of my favorite episodes, actually, of Slightly Unmeditated, was when we covered three magic words. It was episode 57, not very long ago. And that was the documentary that I saw on Prime that Kim and I watched and did a review of together. Um, I don't know. I always kind of go back to that as a nice anchor spot when I forget, you know, Kim always says, well, you get it and then you don't get it and then you get it and you don't get it. And then when I feel like I'm in a moment of forget it or I don't get it, I kind of come back to that and it's nice and reassuring. Um, just knowing that it's out there and that it's not just me making this stuff up in my head. So that's really nice. Um, you know, I already talked about find your center. Who would have imagined <laughs> when I called a friend like two years ago and said, Hey, let's start a podcast, not even knowing how to start it. Or, I mean, a couple of months before that, I didn't even know where to find one. I had to Google it. <laughs> That's why my daughter's embarrassed of me sometimes, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking, let's start a podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a part of me that, of course, knew on a soul level, this is going to work out. It had to work out because something's telling me to do this. Something like I've never really heard before. Like, a, like the universe put their foot down and said, that's it. This is your path. Move forward. Um, and then to not only meet somebody who was like totally open to do a podcast, but had been wanting to do one herself and Kim just fit right in instantaneously. So through the find your center podcast, which is, you know, on the channel, I mean, God, who even thought I would not only have a show, but 
three more, like two more shows and some other stuff in the works, you know, and then to have it to be so meaningful, like find your center I, through that. I've learned so much about monkey mind and cave brain, intellectual humility. And I think the most important lesson of all of the shows we've done is learning that I am not my thoughts, that they are just something I observe. It's not an experience. And, you know, I'm not the experience. I'm just looking at it. I, that was so profound. You know, we learned it in the um, Untethered Soul, especially we re read more about that. And uh, that is a life lesson that I will never forget. And I will try and teach anybody <laughs> I can moving forward. Um, you know, we have covered episodes on everything that I can think of. And then I freak out and say, what could we possibly talk about next? And the coolest thing I've learned is that I don't need to know. I have to like, let it flow. I know that rhymes, but it's sort of a, an epiphany, real time revelation in that. Trusting the process is the words I've heard probably most throughout this experience. And the, I, I fought them a lot. But again, I think I'm finally on the, the other side of the bridge where I'm starting to see the results of that trust and the process. Um, I, a couple months ago, I started a mentorship to learn more about my intuition um, you know, reaching out to my spirit guides, like channeling information. I always say that we, Kim and I have both said that where we feel like there's episodes that we, of these shows that we never even participated in, that we just sort of channeled whatever we said from somewhere else. Um, and again, all of this woo woo <laughs> was so foreign to me, uh, you know, last year at this time, I was kind of reading out of books. I was foolish enough to think we could script a podcast show, but quickly and thankfully realized that that wasn't how it was meant to be. And um, here I am like a year later talking about, you know, my crystals and uh, channeling information from a higher power and following my spirit guide, you know. Uh, refining my visualization skills. Who would have thought daydreaming would have become a life skill? So thank God I was a natural at that. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, you know, I've had so many on-air epiphanies and thank God I have a record to go back and listen to those epiphanies and kind of remind myself where... I came from so that I can keep remembering to, to move forward. So I know where I'm going. Um, and the future is bright. Like, God, it's been a crap few couple of years, personally, globally, societally, emotionally, mentally, physically, in every possible way. It's been stress, stressful and but at the same time, like I, in those deep moments, I do sit back and think, you know, would I do it all again to get where I am? And most of the time, the answer is actually yes. You know, um, I said earlier that I was listening to podcasts today about like simulation theory and it's so intriguing that concept but I think I just, I'm grateful to have like a mind open enough to consider the possibilities, you know? And even when they were kind of talking about the, um, maybe the obstacles of why a simulation possibly couldn't work, it was interesting because I was kind of mentally filling in the gaps of what they were saying, you know? They were even talking about string theory and they were talking about how you know, everything in the universe is connected by this string. And I'm like, well, of course, because we're all the universe, you know. So it's fascinating how when I shifted 
my perspective, even though I kind of believed all of this for most of my life, you know, and it was like a tendency, it's interesting how things have changed. And the only thing I needed to do was like be open and kind of committed to following through, you know? And I just said earlier, you know, asked me a year ago uh, about your crystal, about my crystals and I would have laughed at you, you know? And I used to freak out about that, my, my spiritual practice and what is it? And, and there is no right way to do it. The, actually the only right way for me to do it is my own way, you know? And gradually I've built up my little altar of things that I use in my practice Gradually, I finally got comfortable in meditation. Gradually, I got comfortable interviewing people that I've never met before. You know, I still struggle sometimes to say, I still struggle sometimes to say out loud about my calling, about being a light worker. It's like, maybe not so much self-doubt as it used to be, but it's more like, I don't know. It's like, it's like undeniable. I cannot, I cannot deny it any longer. It's impossible. The universe is making it harder and harder every day. And I feel like every, the more I surrender, the more things are open to me, the more I receive, the easier manifestation is. Right? And guess what? I've already been learning this stuff for so long. And I just haven't been listening, haven't been implementing it into life. And I think that's where my tide is shifting now into surrender and acceptance and peace and all of the cool stuff. So having said that, I'm very excited about where things are going. I said that the future is bright. I have three guests confirmed for the rest of the month that I, people I do not know, people that reached out to me, which is so exciting. <laughs> I am kind of really getting into this interview process and researching guests. I mean, this is not a skill I thought I ha- I'd have or need. And um, I'm realizing that I actually really enjoy it. So, you know, my lessons are my let downs. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Um, I also, I'm not ready to talk about this yet, but I also have another venture after a couple of days of not so great feeling this. I woke up on a Saturday just so full of energy and clarity and I had been praying for that for a really long time that I started putting together something that supports the podcast I'm not where I want to be with it yet before I actually talk about it but it should be very soon um there's some other exciting things too that are that's going on behind the scenes here that I also can't talk about yet, um, but that'll be coming up on future episodes. Um, And all of the new information is just not, it wasn't even part of the vision. Like I never saw that coming. So to have it already happening is just mind blowing. And it reminds me every day why I've put so many hundreds of hours into the editing and recording and the thinking and the Facebooking and all the other stuff, even though it does qualify as work, I don't ever feel like it's work. I feel like it's just my purpose. I feel like things align up so easily in the grand scheme of things. And while I know that there are still not so great days ahead, that my belief in finding the silver lining is 
you know, on my side and it's working for me and being able to put into play all of the other things that I've been learning, you know, again, working with spirit guides and quieting the mind and listening to the intuition and just, you know, everything we learned in the four agreements. Um, again, it's not written uh, in a million different ways for no reason. You know, all of this stuff is interconnected. All of this stuff has meaning. Um, looking at things from a spiritual perspective has really shifted like the quality of my life, uh, the quality of relationships I have. And when I started this podcast, I literally just wanted to talk. I just wanted to, <laughs> to have something to do. It was really born out of boredom. Um, but it was also, I also was very clear on the piece of the puzzle that there's a lot of people who felt like me, like really overwhelmed and confused by this awakening and, you know, uh, shifting perspectives. And it was, it's still very strange and very overwhelming for me sometimes. Um, but looking back, you know, having a physical representation of all of this change and progression and trusting the process, um, I'm super lucky in that I can go back and listen to any episode and I bet I would get like the best piece of information for myself <laughs> that I need today. And that's just how it works, you know. <sighs> I am super proud to say that as of today, you know, the little podcasts that could have been heard in over 32 countries and over 587 cities. And it blows my mind <laughs> how little advertising we've done to get there. Some days I can tell that people are just like word of mouth after they listen to an episode and I'll see, you know, the same city grow exponentially or I'll see a certain, you know, episode that spoke to somebody and then they clearly have shared it with people in other places. And I don't need the, the thousands of downloads to know that what we're doing is the right thing and it's beneficial, but it obviously helps to see that physical manifestation of, you know, something that we consider part of our purpose, if not our whole purpose, and then definitely part of our passion. Bubblesandbooks.com has been a supporter of Slightly Unmeditated since day one. This amazing subscription box delivers self-care right to your door. They pack up a book in the genre of your choice each month and add in a selection of high-quality, handmade bath and body items. There's no better way to chill with a book than to read in a nice, hot bubble bath. You can choose your favorite genre and set up your subscription for effortless relaxation. You can also purchase individual boxes for your book and bath-loving friends. Check out our favorite, the Personal Growth Box. Just visit bubblesandbooks.com to sign up. Enter Unmeditated35 at checkout to receive 35% off your first box of relaxation. I wasn't sure exactly where I was going with this whole episode, but I had to do a solo one on my own to prove that I could do it. Um, and the numbers will tell later if people also believe that I could do it, at least pull it off, fake it till you make it, right? Um, I do want to thank every single person <laughs> that's ever listened to five minutes of an episode of Slightly Unmeditated or Find Your Center or Off the Shelf. Um, I, and then to get feedback to boot is just like, there's nothing that makes my heart feel better. I, I it is, It's like a grade school when that kid asks you to dance that you've been dying. I still remember that. Like I was listening to 
I think it was Starship wrote the song Sarah. <laughs> I, I have a visual every time someone sends me like this really cool feedback of being in grade, at a grade school dance and like the best moment of seventh grade. Um, when someone says, you know, like, I really appreciate your authenticity or thank you so much for addressing those issues because I was just thinking about that today. Like that connection and finding it among other people is just, there's just no experience like it, you know? And anytime I am in one of those moods where I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to quit the podcast. I physically feel like a kick in the ass from the universe. Like, no, you can quit whatever else you want to do, but that's, you can't let that go. So, I'll, and that's okay. I'll work with that. It's amazing that I hit the 40 minute mark talking to myself. Although I should not be surprised because I talk to myself all day, every day. <laughs> Um, I appreciate the opportunity to even do a recap. I hope it, it made sense. I hope, you know, if there were some, uh, episodes that you missed, like maybe I hit upon one, that's kind of your reminder to go back and listen again. Um, again, th there's no way I could thank everybody for listening week after week. There's no way I can thank you for recommending it to your friends or for, you know, sending messages of support. I know that Kim and Juanita feel the same. I know also that I have such a deep appreciation for my guests that I've had. Uh, I do have a resources page on slightlyunmeditated.com. If you ever hear any guests that you are particularly interested in, I encourage you to support there businesses and their dreams and their mission in any way that you can and you know let them know that you know what they're putting out into the world it is very much needed and appreciated so i'm gonna wrap this episode up early earlier than usual and um you know i'll be back with some new and interesting guests to learn more about whatever it is they're going to teach us. And until then, I really hope that you've learned a little something even during this recap and you always feel inspired to keep learning. You can always listen to new episodes of Slightly Unmeditated every Thursday, whether or not I have a guest, because clearly... I know I'm capable of doing this now and I have no excuses left. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You can also reach out to me on the website, slightlyunmeditated.com, Facebook page, Instagram, or email goodvibes at slightlyunmeditated.com. So until we meet again... I am sending you all positive energy and really and truly my sincerest gratitude. I am Tisha and I will always be slightly unmeditated.